All right, guys, so we are here with two C8 Corvettes, but you might notice one of these is not like the other. We're going to go into specific detail on all the differences between the C8 Corvette Stingray and the new C8 Corvette V06. Let's do it. <laughs> started today guys i wanted to really quick mention pro clip as the sponsor of today's video whether you have a c6 a c7 or a c8 corvette pro clip makes the mount that you're going to want for your car it's an extremely easy to install system that does not require any kind of permanent modification tape or screws it clips in and it can be removed as easily as it is installed like i said it is a two-part system meaning that it will have just the arm for the c8 corvette that wraps around the back of the infotainment system and and then you will choose whichever mount best fits your phone to go on the front. The best part, you can actually save 10% just by using the code HPO10 and following the link in the description down below. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. As you guys know by now, I am a very big Corvette fan, but these two specifically are the hot items right now. And the C8 Corvette Stingray, and the C8 Corvette Z06 are very similar, but at the same time, they're pretty different. So we're gonna go over a lot of the differences today, all of the aesthetic stuff. We're not gonna drive either one of these two because we've kind of already done that, but I haven't really seen a lot of videos out there specifically detailing the differences between these two. And there are a lot of differences, even though they look very similar. So right off the bat, we're gonna start at the very beginning of the car, which of course is the front end. This is where you're gonna notice the biggest differences. On your left, of course, we have a red mist 2023 C8 Corvette. That is the Stingray. On the right, we have the new 2023 Elkhart Lake Blue Z06. Now you can see the differences in the bumper, but just in case you're not seeing all of it, I'm gonna kind of spell it out for you here. On the left and right on both cars, we have giant radiators, pretty visible from the front. And on the Z06, we have one in the dead center of the bumper as well. So on the Stingray, they opted to kind of leave that space blank for the license plate holder and a little bit more of a decorative carbon flash painted piece. But on the Z06, we do get a center mounted radiator for additional cooling while on the track. Now you also have a slightly different styling to the Z06 bumper that gives it a little bit more of an aggressive look, but at the same time really opens up the front for as much air to those radiators and to the front brake ducts as possible. Now you are also going to notice on the Stingray, we do have a Z51 style front splitter, whereas on the Z06, the splitter is body colored for now. Stay tuned for what we might be doing with that one in the future. But with the Z07 package car, you can have a giant carbon fiber or carbon flash painted front splitter that really puts this thing over the edge. But for right now, the differences aren't huge, but they are there. As you can see from this angle, guys, we have basically the exact same styling on the hood all the way up to the roof line, the windshield, the side view mirrors, even down to that passenger side view mirror being a little bit longer than the driver's one to offer better visibility out of this car. The biggest difference again is gonna come from the fenders. So the front fenders on the Z06 overall are about three and a half inches wider than the C8 Corvette Stingray. So you have a slightly wider appearance to the Z06 over the Stingray, but it's honestly hard to even tell when they're sitting right beside each other. Moving back to car, guys, we're gonna start talking about the wheels. So on the Z06, the wheel sizes are slightly different than they are on the Stingray. With the Z06, you get a 20 inch in the front and a 21 inch wheel in the back. You also get a much wider wheel on the front and back of the Z06. With the Stingray over on your left, we do have a 19 inch wheel in the front and a 20 inch wheel in the back, again, with less girth. So the rear wheel of the Stingray is a 305 series width, whereas the rear wheel on the Z06 is a 345 width. That is a massive difference in tire size. And especially if you see it in person, the tires on the Z06 are just absolutely insane. Now, obviously with this particular Z06, you can see it does have the carbon fiber wheels, whereas the Stingray has just the carbon flash painted base wheels. Now, the other difference you can kind of see from this angle is the rotor size. So on the Stingray, because it creates less power, 
you have less need for a gigantic rotor. So there is a smaller rotor on the Stingray. And in this case, the Z06 also has a carbon ceramic rotor set up. So not only are they bigger, they're also carbon ceramic with this particular build. You can, however, get them in iron on the Z06, just like you can on the Stingray. Moving back the car again, guys, we have two really big noticeable changes on the side of the Z06 over the Stingray. Uh, the biggest one is going to, of course, be that side intake. It is much larger and it is slightly redesigned to the point where it looks more fitting of a supercar. It also has bigger radiators on the inside and obviously, like I said, it also sticks out further to accompany the larger rear fenders, which again are about three and a half inches wider than the Stingray fenders. Below that, we also have a slightly different setup to the side skirt approach. So GM went with a more of a three-fourths length side skirt here, whereas on the Stingray, you can get their 5VM package, which is an entire body length side skirt with a fin at the end. Again, different, but very similar. So as you can see here on the Stingray, there is no side skirt. So this one does not have a 5VM package, but if it did, it would run the entire length down here. And you can also clearly see the difference in the actual side scoop here. This is the area where all the air comes in to cool down the car. It goes into the intake as well. And it just has a very different look to it than the Z06 one. Now you can also clearly see the wheels and the brake rotors as well here, and you can tell that they're a lot smaller than they are in the Z06, but still not a bad look. Now coming further down on the bumper, you can see the heat extraction area right here. It is much more stretched out and not as deep as the Stingray. Again, this is kind of an aesthetic choice because ultimately there's not a whole lot of airflow that comes through here anyway, but it is for allowing hot air to escape out the back. Now the biggest difference, of course, in the rear bumper on the Z06 is going to be that rear diffuser where the center exit exhaust comes out. Now this is your flat plane crank engine and that thing makes some absolutely glorious sound. Now with the Stingray, we didn't have a center exit exhaust. We had them coming out the sides of the rear bumper. GM made this decision because they wanted this thing to sound absolutely phenomenal and they knocked it out of the park. And obviously because of the extra width of the Z06 body, we have an actual pass-through right here. So aerodynamic ability. But what you can notice here is it's actually trapping a bunch of rocks. Standing back here at the back of the Stingray, we have the little spoiler here. This is the dovetail option for the Stingray as well. It is definitely a different approach. As I said, the spoiler options on the Z06 are a lot more aggressive, a lot more aimed at aero, whereas the ones on the, the Stingray here are more so aesthetic. You can see what I was talking about with the bumper here. This kind of flares out more than going straight down the way it does on the Z06. The heat extractors here are definitely a different shape. They're more of a, a tall and skinny option, whereas the Z06 is more flattened out. And then of course below that you can see the side exit exhaust versus the center exiting exhaust of the Z06. Now with the Stingray, we're gonna obviously show the engines because we can't talk about these cars without showing what makes them go. This is obviously the 6.2 liter LT2 engine. And of course this is going to have 495 horsepower in this situation. And it's definitely, uh, it's enough. <laughs> I'll put it to you that way. You really don't need much more than this. The guys at GM said, you know what? Let's give them more than they need. So we went with the Z06, which of course is the 5.5 liter flat plane crank. And it puts out 670 horsepower. Now, as I said, guys, this is that 5.5 liter, but it is just a massively different looking engine. It is a massively different sounding engine. Everything about this thing is just different than anything Chevy has done before. The Stingray engine kind of fits more into what they've done with Corvette in the past. It's, it maintains that same 6.2 liter displacement. This is the first time Chevy's really stepped away from that in a great fashion with the 5.5 liter and also giving it a flat plane crank. But again, 670 horsepower out of a naturally aspirated engine, and it just sounds phenomenal. Another difference on the side here, you can see the Z06 placement is something different. This is put in an area where nothing existed on the Stingray. So I think Chevy kind of did this to make up for the difference in the 5VM package, because that area was typically more covered up on the Stingray. But still, pretty interesting placement. The fronts of both of these cars are identical. Same size, same shape, same cargo area, identical. With the interiors of the car, they're basically identical as well. Now on the Z06, you can see this one is definitely a little more churched up looking than the Stingray we have here because it is a 3LZ with the level two carbon fiber, the stealth package. Basically every single option you could get on the interior is checked here. 
The only real difference of the interior is going to be the steering wheel on the Z06. With the steering wheel, you can see here at the bottom, we do get a Z06 kind of nameplate, as well as carbon fiber paddles as an option with the level two carbon fiber interior, which of course covers that center console as well. This is, from what I understand, an option that is supposed to be coming to the Stingrays as well. But for right now, you can only get this level two carbon with the Z06 or the upcoming E-Ray. Other than the carbon fiber and other than that Z06 stamp at the bottom of the steering wheel, the interiors are identical. You can get the same options on both cars. So this is the Stingray interior. I know you're gonna notice right off the bat, it's not quite as spicy as the Z06 interior, but like I said, this one here is a 2LT versus the Z06 being a 3LZ. So we're missing a little bit of the fancier options, the better quality leather, the uh, options for colored stitching. There is no carbon fiber on the interior of this car because the owner elected not to get any, but you can have the interior look almost just like like the Z06, minus that Z06 stamp at the bottom of the steering wheel, and minus the level two carbon fiber for right now, because like I said, I do believe that is an option coming later for the Stingrays. Another difference you can see with the Stingray is on the rear hatch here, we get the Stingray logo, and this has caused some controversy on the internet. Some people like this, some people don't, but with the Z06, we get a better option in my opinion. And that of course is an actual C8 Corvette badge. Now, this one has an option for the Stealth badges, which is just basically a badge painted fully in carbon flash. But either way, even if you didn't have the Stealth badging, you would just have your normal C8 Corvette badge on the back here instead of a Stingray or a Z06 logo. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. Hopefully this helped you out a little bit with the aesthetic differences. I haven't really seen a video out there yet talking about all the differences between these cars, and that's pretty much it. So whenever you really boil it down, if you're not a Corvette enthusiast, it's kind of hard to tell the difference between these two. I'll be honest with you, I've seen people who don't really know Corvette, and they have no idea what the difference is here because they do look very similar. The biggest things to keep in mind, this car is about three and a half inches wider. It has the option for bigger wheels. It has the option for better performance and better braking abilities as well. That's pretty much it. Of course, I am oversimplifying this. If you're a Corvette nut, you're gonna go crazy over that statement. But at the same time, this is the better car, but it's not super apparent that it's the better car. Again, the option is always up to you. This was never a video to tell you which car you should get, just to break it down and show you all the differences between the two options available right now. If you're more of a track nut, this is probably the better car. If you're more of a daily cruiser, this is probably your better car for now at least, until the E-Ray comes out, which will kind of replace the cruiser ability of the base Stingray. Either way, they're both awesome cars. If you guys liked what you saw, please hit that thumbs up button. Let me know you're liking the content so we can keep doing this kind of stuff for you. If you have any questions about either one of these two cars, leave them in the comment section down below and I'll make sure to get you an answer. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I'm gonna have loads of stuff like this coming you're not gonna wanna miss. And as always guys, I will catch you in the next upload.